Hi, I'm Adia. In my time using the Vocaloid software, though not an expert, I've learned a few things that the basic manufacturer tutorials just don't cover. They give you isolated tips on how to use certain features, but not an overview of how to put the pieces together and help make a track that genuinely sounds good. If you're curious about what's really involved with making Vocaloid and want to see if it's something you'd be up for, then this tutorial is aimed at you. I'm not going to delve into fine details, so if you find while watching that you have some more specific questions, there are plenty of other resources available to help you. First, I will cover what you'll need to start, and then I'll give you a rough overview of how I use Vocaloid, from inputting the notes to tuning the vocals. Finally, I'll provide some advice on preparing your track's presentation before it's published. There may be ways superior to how I do things, and by all means politely leave them in a comment, but this is an overview of my unique workflow for Vocaloid that I am sharing with you today. Note that this video was made from the approach of an American English speaker using the Vocaloid 5 editor, primarily for making covers of existing songs, so your personal workflow may vary accordingly. Before you can begin, you'll need these bare minimum materials. A nice computer, preferably one with lots of RAM, storage, and a better than average processor. You can use a computer with average specs, but it will be very, very painful. Music editing files are notoriously huge, so I also recommend having lots of available storage. Both Vocaloid editors that we will be discussing work on Windows and Mac. A voice bank. This is an important step because your choice will affect lots of things down the line. Ideally, you should select a voice bank that's intended for the language you plan on making them sing in. Let's say, for example, you were planning on making music in English but selected a Japanese voice bank to work with. It is still technically doable, but will require a lot more hands-on work on your part to get them to enunciate things correctly in English because they possess a Japanese phonetic sound library. It's worth noting that all voice banks are unique, and there's a reason why some people say others are harder to use. They're made by different companies with different programming and voice talents, so they're going to end up behaving differently from one another. Because of this, some Vocaloids end up working better in certain genres. For example, the Vocaloid I'll be primarily using for this tutorial is my personal favorite, Oliver. He was made by Power FX, which was a company that specialized in making English Vocaloids, so his default English speech is very natural and clear to understand. However, he is sampled from a 13-year-old British choir boy, so he often struggles with lower notes, can easily be drowned out by loud music, and by default is inclined to pronounce things with a British accent, while I often cover songs with American accents. As a result, while using him, I often have to go back as an added step and manually adjust his pronunciation. More on how to go about this later. In general, just be aware of the variances between voice banks' respective ease of utility and the kind of music you're wanting to make. An editor. Your default editor is determined by your voice bank of choice. All Vocaloids should work with the standard Yamaha Vocaloid editor. However, the popular voice banks, like Miku and the Gang, are referred to as Kryptonloids because the company that owns them, Krypton Future Media, kind of broke free from the Yamaha software umbrella. They have their own editor called Pia Pro Studio that comes bundled when you purchase Kryptonloids. So if you plan on, say, just wanting to use Miku, then you don't need to worry about buying the Vocaloid editor separately, unless you prefer the features in it over Pia Pro Studios. Make sure that you purchase a voice bank that's compatible with your editor. The latest version at the time of this video, Vocaloid 5, is compatible with Vocaloid 3 voice banks and up. If you take advantage of this backwards compatibility, just know that older Vocaloids will have limited functionality with newer features, like growling or cracking. This also means if you're wanting to use a Vocaloid 2 voice bank, you'll either have to purchase an older version of Vocaloid or use Pia Pro Studio, which is compatible with Vocaloid 2 to Vocaloid 4 voice banks. I won't sugarcoat it. Vocaloid is an expensive hobby. 
Some voice banks offer one month free trials, so this may be a good option to try before committing yourself. Otherwise, it may be worth it for you to look into free alternatives to Vocaloid, like Utau or Sevio. In addition to the required programs, here's some other software I recommend having. At the end of the day, no matter what you plan on using it for, Vocaloid is a form of instrument. Having a background in music, or at least familiarity with reading it, is really going to help you in the following steps. Find the instrumental. Do what you gotta do. If it's available, buy it. If it's not, you can try seeing if someone has uploaded the instrumental to YouTube and you can rip it from there using an mp3 converter. Sometimes searching for off vocals helps as an alternative to instrumental or karaoke. Otherwise, you might have to learn how to extract vocals from a song yourself. Once you've gotten your instrumental, drag and drop it on the timeline. Make sure it's in a .wav format and that the beginning of the music lines up with where you'd begin to input your first measure. Trim it using an audio editing program if you have to. Project Setup The tempo ensures that your singer stays in time at the same pace with your instrumental. If Googling it doesn't immediately tell you what the song's tempo is, there are some free apps that allow you to tap along with the beat and average the timing from there. Afterwards, set up your time signature in the top left corner of the Vocaloid editor and proof listen to make sure that your tempo is a match with your instrumental. Input Notes See if someone's made a cover of this song before you and whether they offer a VSQ, VSQX, or a MIDI file. If you can find one, you can import it here, and all of the notes will be already arranged for you. You can then skip to the tuning phase. If this option isn't available for your song of choice, then you're going to have to be more hands-on. Manual note input can be broken down into several steps. Find the sheet music. Find your sheet music online. I'm not a sponsor, but I personally have a subscription to MuseScore that allows users to upload their own transcriptions, so whatever song I want to cover, I can usually find on there. Once you've found your sheet music, determine the key to see whether certain notes should be transcribed as sharp or flat. Do not input these notes by ear. You may feel that this would be easier, but there's a saying in the art world, you must know the rules before you can break them. You can go crazy with artistic tweaks when it comes time for tuning. Set the time signature. Assuming the time signature for your project has been set up in the top left, make sure that your musical editor input is also set to quantize at the same beats per minute or a divisible variation. So if your song is 4 beats per minute, you wouldn't want to be inputting notes at 3 beats per minute. Pacing. I like to input notes a bar line at a time, and then rewind to plug in the words before moving on to the next one. Taking it in small bits like this helps so that it's easier not to lose your place while working and figure out where you left off. Extending notes. When you go to input words, the sounds are distributed across syllables. So for example, if you have three notes but four syllables, it'll distribute the first three and cut out the fourth. To avoid this, you need to create enough notes for the syllables to stretch across. You can do this by either inputting it that way to begin with, or by going back with the scissor tool and typing the word again to overwrite it. If you have one word that continues across several notes, all you need to do is add the dash symbol to make it extend. You can either put it in between to divide one word between multiple notes, or leave one dash at the end to make the last sound carry on. Customizing your voice. The style tab. Vocaloid 5 comes with a number of preset styles that are like different cocktails of EQ effects. After you have at least a couple of bars of notes to listen to, I suggest playing around with the styles and seeing which one you prefer. If you like some aspects of a style but not others, you can customize it. The Customize tab is where you can manually tweak the singing style preset that you've set. Most aspects of a style preset can be altered this way. Here is a brief rundown of what the parameters are. Audio effects. There are some basic EQ effects available to mess with here. You can right-click to add more or you can tick them off here. 
A perk to using these is that you don't have to wait for rendering and can edit while the audio is playing. Alternatively, you can wait until you're ready to mix and master your track to add your effects. Because of this, I like to take everything except for the EQ off first because they distract from fine-tuning the other settings. Then I add them back on afterwards. Singing skill. Please just shut this off. It's meant to give them faux strengths and weaknesses in an attempt to make them sound more natural, but it just sounds awful. Even when it's set to a low level, I find myself fighting against it. Voice color. I would like to preface this section with a friendly reminder that less is more. This directly alters the color or feeling of a Vocaloid's voice, but straying too far from the source can sound uncomfortable. The exciter goes between bright and muffled. You may think that anything is better than being muffled, but bright actually trims off the lower frequencies and enhances the higher ones, thereby pushing it on top of the music rather than allowing it to mix, so you don't want to stray too far with this. The growl goes between hard and clear. I personally would leave this at zero and only manually turn it on when there's a part calling for the singer to growl. Mm, what I say? Otherwise, if the singer is overall meant to sound a little angsty, perhaps use it lightly. Mm, what I say? The breathiness goes between breathy and clear. Think of this like a whisper factor. I think this parameter is situational to the song you're covering. If it's a softer song where the voice is more of the focus, then there's greater emphasis on the vocaloid singing sounding natural, and this would be a great occasion to use this. It's not really suited for songs with a faster pace where you need to clearly understand what they're saying over the music. The air goes between airy and clear. This gives it a softer tone. I think it's good to always have a little bit of this because it helps shave off a bit of the robotic voice aspect. But if you go too crazy, you can't understand what they're saying anymore. What you say? The mouth goes between open and close. When I first started using Vocaloid, I thought, of course you want their mouth open. They need to sing. But this parameter actually influences their pronunciation. If we were to speak with our mouth 100% open all the time, our speech wouldn't sound natural, right? Mm, what you say? But you still need their pronunciation to be clear, and your mouth is usually wider when singing. So I like to set this at negative 10 and then manually tweak when tuning if something they're saying is too little or too much emphasis. The character goes between cute and cool. This alters the native pitch of their voice to be higher or lower. Please don't go crazy with this. Mm, what you say? Mm, what you say? The robot voice makes their notes flat and straightforward with no bends between notes. Intentionally unnatural and perfect for if you're going for a mechanical voice. Mm, what you say? The default lyric. When you input notes on the timeline, this will be what they're automatically set to say. By system default, it's ooh, but this is where you can change that. The breath. This automatically calculates when it's appropriate for them to take a breath, how much, and then inputs it between phrases. You can change how frequently they breathe, how hard they inhale, exhale, and whether it sounds more feminine or masculine. In Oliver's case, though he's male, I actually have to set his breaths to female because he's so high-pitched that the male breathing sounds unnatural. Mm, what you say? Once you get a sound you want to move forward with, you should keep these settings consistent throughout your track. You can accomplish this by either saving your settings as a new preset, continuing to write in the same bar, or duplicating your bar by snipping off an empty bit at the end to continue to input the notes for the next part. 
In this manner, you can continue to input notes for the rest of your track while maintaining the same style. Your style can always be changed later, but I like to make sure that I start with one that has a sound I already like because it means less backtracking later. Tuning. Like mentioned earlier, every Vocaloid is unique, so they all require their own style of tuning to make sure they sound just right. Tuning is what gives their voice emotion, personality, and life. There's so many ways you can go about this, so for the sake of brevity, I'm just selecting a small handful of methods to discuss that I find comes in handy most often. Correcting pronunciation. Sometimes the way you're supposed to spell words is not going to result in your Vocaloid correctly pronouncing them. If this is the case, you're going to have to switch into manual phoneme editing mode. Basically, in Vocaloid, words are broken down into a combination of different phonetic sounds, and by editing them manually, you can force the Vocaloid to pronounce words a certain way. In Vocaloid 5, when you hit Control R, you swap from the standard lyric input mode to phoneme input mode. I've taken a list of the major phoneme inputs from the Vocaloid wiki and put them into a much prettier looking Google Doc cheat sheet that I prefer to use, and I will leave a link for it. For the sake of explaining this in better terms of practical application, let's use another example. Remember earlier when I said that Oliver is programmed with a British accent and I often have to go back and adjust it to sound American? To emulate British pronunciation, by default, Oliver says the word and using the ah phoneme. Can't and. To make it sound American, I replaced ah with the phonemes for a, e, a. Uh. Apply this logic of using literal or related sounds for your manual phoneme inputs. Syllable emphasis. When we went over the Customize tab, I mentioned that you can come back later and selectively add the voice color effects in, and this is how you do that. Down in the left corner, there is this very, very tiny plus button. Once you open it, a bar should open up over your music editor. Here you're presented with a variety of settings to play with, most of which I've already shown you back in the Customization tab. You can play with all these on your own time, but one thing I would like to highlight here is the setting for velocity. As far as I know, this controls how much emphasis is put on a syllable. It can help make a subtle but impactful difference when it comes to enunciation. What you say? Attack and release effects. If you click on these two brackets here, you'll open up the attack and release panel. Here you will have a plethora of options split into two sides. The left controls the attack, or how a note begins, and the right controls a note's release, or how it ends. This is where you'll find cool settings like voice cracks or vibrato. You can further edit the intensity of these effects using the Emotion tool. For this example, I know that it's a natural effect for singers to go into more of a subtle vibrato the longer a note is held, so I adjusted the beginning of the vibrato to be activated later in the note and shortened the height of the bends to be more subtle. Mm, what you say? Note tuning strategies. There are two main strategies I've seen people prefer to fine tune their notes, pitch bending and note bending. This process is very trial and error, but I think as long as you remember to stay within the key, you shouldn't have to worry. Note bending. Straightforward and easier, but can be less precise and natural. You basically rely heavily on inserting smaller note accents and using the dash symbol to extend your notes across them, or sometimes cutting up words completely and going crazy with the phonemes. I like this method because even with these note accents, it's easier for you to stay in tune because it's all very deliberate. Mm, what you say? Pitch bending. More precise and natural, but is harder to master, takes much longer, and risks sounding off-tune. With this technique, the most emphasis is placed on the attack and release of notes blending into each other. 
A common trick to make Vocaloid singing more realistic with pitch bending is by making the absolute tail end of the note go up for females and drop for males. I think the key for this sounding right is to keep the two pitch controller handles really tight together, and you can help achieve this by ticking the quantization feature off on the musical editor. There's no right way between these methods, so do what sounds best to you. For me, I like to start off with the note bending strategy and then sprinkle in some pitch bending for those attack and release techniques. Take breaks. You can grow numb to your track or even suffer burnout by over listening to it. So walk away every so often before coming back with fresh ears to finish your work. Once you're finally satisfied with how your track sounds, it's time to move on to the next production phase. After your work within the Vocaloid editor has been completed, here are some additional factors to consider that will add some extra polish before publishing your work. Mixing and mastering. Mixing and mastering influences the feel of a song as well as balances the volume and makes sure the vocals and instrumental blend nicely. Taking the time to do this can really help your track sound more professional. When exporting vocal tracks from Vocaloid for mixing and mastering, make sure that all the vocal tracks are being exported as separate .wav files. I would not recommend exporting the instrumental or a mix down straight from the editor. Then I go into a multi-track session in my audio editor of choice and drag and drop the vocal parts, then placing the original source file for the audio instrumental underneath in order to best preserve its quality. For more information on how to mix and master from this point, look up some other tutorials. Videography. In addition to Vocaloid being a primarily music-oriented fandom, a lot of appeal is also placed in the art talent and video presentation as well. It's common for people to upload their Vocaloid covers primarily to YouTube, among other platforms. Here's some quick suggestions for however you decide to tackle your video. Make sure your thumbnail is eye-catching and stands out. I find that thumbnails where the singer is front and center, stylized, and facing forward are the most iconic. If you have the creative energy to make a music video, go for it. It adds value to your upload. Even if someone doesn't personally care for the musical quality of your cover, they may stick around for your visuals, whether it's using MMD or an entirely different original animation. If you don't have the energy for a music video, instead consider the still art that will be featured. If you can't draw it yourself, commission somebody else to. Though it may be easy to do, do not take someone else's work without asking. Afterwards, consider throwing in some unique visual tweaks using After Effects to make the still drawing a bit more dynamic. Overlaying lyrics can help your listeners fully understand what your Vocaloid is saying, as well as help to keep watchers stimulated. Get all the important keywords in your title. Which voice bank is this? What's the song's name? Or what is it well known as? Who is it originally by? What edition of the Vocaloid editor did you use to make it? Look at how other Vocaloid video titles are usually formatted to help you with this. I hope that my overview was helpful to you. Whether you're unsure about tapping into Vocaloid and were wanting a preview of what it's like, or already had it but weren't sure about how to use some features to streamline your workflow. One last piece of advice I'll leave with you comes from the Miku Twitter themselves. You're not gonna make anything good for a while, but you just need to keep pushing and keep finishing projects. Learn to complete things. <laughs>